Hey, I'm Chris with Prima Coffee Equipment. Today we're jumping into the world of espresso. We're doing a little crash course and making espresso if you're new to it. So the first question we should answer is, what exactly is espresso? Is it just really strong coffee? Is it a special bean or special roast or something like that? And all those, the answer is really no. Espresso is just another way of making coffee with the same ingredient. So just as you make a different cup of coffee with a French press or pour over, you're making a different cup of coffee with espresso. And what happens when you're making espresso is you are using high pressurized water to actually shorten the brew time and dissolve more solids and emulsify oils, which gives you that distinctive layer of crema at the top of the shot. So that's kind of an overview of what espresso is. It's just a very concentrated means of making coffee. It requires some different equipment. So before we actually get into making it, um, let's talk about the things that we need to consider as we're making it. As with every brewing method, there are certain brewing variables, things that you manipulate and control to get different results. So first, we have our grind. We're going to use a special grinder for making espresso usually, and the grind that you're going to use to make espresso has to be very, very fine. So you're grinding much finer than usual. It actually starts to clump together because it's that fine, but it still has a distinct texture when you rub it. Um, it feels a little bit smaller than table salt perhaps, but it is finer than just, uh, just about any other kind of coffee besides Turkish. Also there's our dose. Dose refers to our brewing ratio. So no matter what kind of coffee you're making, there's always a ratio of coffee to water, and we call that dose. So with espresso, um, if you're brewing a double shot, you are usually going to be using between 18 and 21 grams of ground coffee. At least that's what we prefer to use. Um, some people go outside of that higher or lower. We recommend between 18 and 21 grams for your coffee dose, and that is actually relative to your yield. So with espresso, instead of measuring coffee in and water in, we measure coffee in and espresso out. That's because we're not really able to measure the exact water that goes into um, that shot of espresso into that puck because we're using an espresso machine. So we measure the coffee we put in, and we measure the yield we get out. That dose that I gave you, 18 to 21 grams, is what we recommend for about a two ounce, um, two ounce yield or two ounce uh, shot that you actually get out. And that is going to weigh, if you're using a scale, which we do like to use scales, it's going to weigh around 30 grams or so. So that's the ratio that you're working with. So we have dose, we have yield, we have grind. We're also going to be working with a completely new variable, and that's TAMP. TAMP refers to the act of compressing that coffee. When you grind coffee into this, which is called a portafilter, you're going to have to compress it with a tamper. And what that does is it creates the restriction and that's necessary for keeping that coffee and that water together. Because this is under high pressure, if you weren't tamping at all, the water would just fly right through. You get a very weak, underdeveloped shot. So we tamp to create restriction so that the coffee and the water are actually forced to hang up together. That forces the reaction. Um, it emulsifies those oils. Um, it dissolves more solids. So that's one of the very key parts of making espresso, that tamp part. Now there's also temperature. That's not unique to espresso, um, but with any, with any brewing process, you can manipulate temperature. Um, again, it's usually going to be between 195 degrees and 205 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what most people recommend for making espresso. And with this particular machine, as with many, you can control that right on the display here. So I can easily get into the system and control it. Right now it's set out 201, which you can see right there. Um, if your machine that you're working with doesn't have that, that's fine. You can assume that the machine is doing what it's supposed to for now. Um, there are ways to kind of manipulate that without this sort of display. Um, but for now, you can just assume that your machine is doing what it's supposed to brewing within that range. Um, that's really all the brewing variables that we're going to work with. So and we have dose, grind, yield, tamp, and temperature. Now let's look at, before we actually make a shot, let's look at the equipment you need. You do need some kind of unique equipment. Um, so first we're gonna have, of course, an espresso machine. This is what makes the magic happen. It's your brewing method, like your French press, or your, your pour over dripper, your espresso machine. In that espresso machine you have a porta filter. This is really just um, a filter in the same way that you have a paper filter. Um, or another metal or cloth filter. It's metal, it's a little cylindrical basket it's called your port filter. Attach this handle which you can grab onto. You're going to need an espresso grinder. These grinders need to be capable of grinding very fine and often the burrs are different, more cut toward espresso. Um, we do want to 
highly, highly stress that you're using a burr grinder to get consistent results. That's contrasted with the blade grinder. So espresso grinder that can grind very fine, uses burrs to cut instead of blades, and offers very fine adjustment. You want to be able, within that really fine range, to make very minute adjustments. You don't want one click to be a wide swing or else you're going to find it just kind of difficult to manipulate and not very fun to work with. So this is the Mazer Mini. It's a great espresso grinder. We also recommend having at least one scale that can measure in small increments. The scales are useful for weighing your dose, so weighing the coffee you put in, and for weighing the yield, the espresso that you get out. So we'll use one or both of these scales as we're making it. Um, also going to need a tamper, of course. We talked about that. This is what you're going to use to compress the coffee into the portafilter. If you want to get really particular about your technique and really hone that in, we recommend the Prima Tamp very strongly. I like that a lot. Finally, you're going to need a shot glass to get your shot into, and then the timer is going to be helpful too, just to keep track of the whole, whole process. So let's get started. The first step is going to be preparing your espresso machine. You just need to fill the machine with water. In this case, there's a reservoir right in the back here that I can fill with water. Some of these machines you can actually plumb directly. Um, so you want to get your machine full and then you're going to need to heat it up. The machine, depending on its size, could take anywhere from 10, 15 up to 45 minutes to heat up. Larger commercial machines even longer perhaps. But don't just jump into things as soon as you see that temperature ready to go. I right here can see when my temperature is ready, but I actually want more than that. I want the whole machine to be hot. I want to make sure every component is really warm and ready to go before I'm started or else all of these wide swings while I'm actually brewing and that's not going to end up well for our shot. So put your water in, heat your machine up. Um, next you're actually going to begin preparing your shot. So what I like to do is go ahead and just run water through the group and through the portafilter. What's that going to do is bring fresh water to the front since there are a couple of um, you know pipes in here that are filled with water that have been sitting for a while. It's going to bring fresh water to the front and it's also going to get everything hot. So the group is hot, the filter is hot, and that's going to help me ensure temperature stability while I'm brewing. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this out, wipe the portafilter out, top and bottom, and wipe that screen so that everything is dry before we actually start. If it's dry, you're going to have coffee sticking in, in weird places and clumping together more, and that's not going to promote even extraction very well. So. That's good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and grind and dose my coffee. So, get the port filter right under here, and I'm going to fill this up, shooting roughly for, like I said earlier, 18 to 21 grams of coffee. So we'll get this going, and as I do that, you're going to see me sort of moving the port filter around. That's going to help distribute that coffee evenly in that basket. I'll tell you why in just a second. As I'm filling, you are going to see me distribute this by moving the portafilter and sliding my fingers across the grounds there. That's going to help to make sure that everything is already distributed before I tamp. Even packing of the coffee actually starts right at distribution. If you have a big peak in the middle and then you go ahead and tamp, you're going to have uneven pressure. So the goal is to make sure everything is nice and even before you even tamp and then you're really sealing that off when you tamp. So, Based on what my grinder's been doing, this is about between 18 and 21, that range I was shooting for. Now I'm going to go ahead and tamp. Make sure that your tamper is dry, it's uh, free from any loose coffee particles. Anything that's on here can actually mess with the puck and we don't want that. There's already enough room for error there. So go ahead and tamp just by setting this in the basket. Feeling with your fingers here, make sure that it's nice and even and you're going to give it a nice firm press with everything aligned, your wrist, hand, all the way up through your arm and elbow. Give that a firm press and give it a little twist. That twist there, sometimes referred to as a polish, is going to help really put loose grounds in their place and make sure that everything is nice, even and smooth for the water to begin penetrating that. That's good to go. I'm going to stick my portafilter inside the group. This time I'm going to use a scale to weigh my yield. So turn that scale on. Got a dead battery in our scale or something. No worries, this is a two ounce shot glass, so we know that its yield is going to be um, just about right if we get to the top of this glass.
So that's all lined up. Now I'm going to go ahead and start my timer right when I activate the switch and that's going to turn the pump on and get this going. Right now I am using something called a bottomless or naked porta filter. You can see on like some porta filters it's chopped at the bottom. There aren't these spouts. And what that helps me do is helps me check my tamping. I can actually see after this whether um, and, and during actually whether the stream is even, which would indicate whether or not my tamp was even and firm and everything. So we're right to the top there, which means we're right at about 30 grams, two ounces or so right in there. You can see this sort of Guinness effect is, is this referred to, and you can see that distinct layer of creme at the top, which indicates that you have actually made espresso with the right pressure, and you have fresh coffee, all those sort of things. So that is how you make a shot of espresso. Um, it's very simple, very easy once you have the equipment and get the hang of it to actually make really tasty espresso at home. It's not second rate. Um, it's the real thing, just like a cafe experience, and you can really enjoy it at home. So. Get that going, work on that for a while. If you start to notice some problems, you can actually check some of our other films in our blog to get some troubleshooting techniques, which will help you discern um, how to change certain things that went wrong if your shot's tasting kind of funky. So, to make a shot of espresso, thanks for watching and enjoy.